Hello and welcome you all to today's lecture. Uh, this is going to be our last lecture and therefore I am going to summarize what we have done in the last 59 lectures. So the course uh, as we started was essentials of oxidation reduction and CC bond formation application in organic synthesis. So initially we started with the introduction to organic synthesis and then importance of selectivity and basics of oxidations and development of sulfur based oxidations we discussed. Of course initially we saw the chromium based oxidations and then we considered the two possibilities that is uh, uh, the uh, oxidation in an intermolecular fashion or an intramolecular fashion via a 5 member transition state. Then of course uh, we looked at on bloom type of oxidation, then of course uh, TMSO activated oxidation like Moffett Fitzner, Barton type of oxidations and then we also discuss the torsal uh, studies which uh, allowed to establish the intramolecular mechanism based on deuterium labeling. Then we of course discuss all these oxidations which are similar in concept that is uh, paric doering swern oxidation kori kim oxidation as we discussed that they were all conceptually similar and they had similar type of intermediates first upon reaction with dmso followed by alcohol to form this intermediate and then of course go to the aldehyde so this intermediate of course was formed from dmso and an electrophile or from DMS and an activator which is in the coring chem oxidation. Then we looked at the pumerar intermediates from sulfur as well as selenium based reactions and their use in organic synthesis by trapping this intermediate whether X is sulfur or selenium. So the sulfoxide and selenoxides lead to this particular seleno or sulfur intermediates. And also we saw how sulfoxides and selenoxides as I have shown here that we take this particular compound and if we have the carbon X bond here where X is sulfur or selenium then via sulfoxide it can undergo elimination or via selenoxide it can undergo elimination to form the corresponding double bond. Then of course with selenium dioxide based oxidations we saw that allylic uh, alcohol oxidation that means the allylic hydrogen on a substrate like this leads to the allylic alcohol formation and a ketone can lead to 1, 2 diketone formation. Then we saw sulfoxide sulfonate rearrangement which is also known as Mislo Evans rearrangement. So a concerted process was uh, kind of discussed with 2, 3 sigma tropic rearrangement where this allyl sulfoxide goes to allyl sulfonate followed by of course a cleavage of the oxygen sulfur bond by thiophile to form this allylic alcohol. The thiophiles of course we use were this kind. And of course the intermediates of uh, these kinds were discussed based on mechanistic aspects. Then we can saw Saigusa Ito reaction which is basically an oxidation of an enol silyl ether to the corresponding enone using palladium acetate and benzoquinone as co-oxidant. Then we also saw one two ketone transposition that is uh, if we have a ketone like this we can put it onto this next carbon using different types of uh, chemistry. And also in the same context we did one say enone transposition that means if we have an enone of this kind we can convert to the corresponding transposed enone of this type via this tertiary allyl alcohol using what is called as daubin michno rearrangement where an oxidant reacts with this allyl alcohol which is a tertiary allyl alcohol to form this enone. And we discussed the mechanism 
and its application. Then we saw desmartin pararginin based oxidations and also IBX that is 2 hydroxybenzoic acid based oxidations where the reagents of this type this is desmartin pararginin and this is IBX converts alcohol to the ketone or enone. If we use two equivalents of the IBX then of course we get the corresponding enone. The first equivalent converts alcohol to the corresponding ketone and the second one leads to the enone. In the case of of course DS Martin we of course convert alcohol to aldehyde. So both of them they convert alcohol to aldehyde but then here IBX converts to the corresponding enone if we take more than one equivalent of IBX. We saw then Prevost's reaction and it is Woodward modification that is you start with an olefin like this under two different conditions under dry condition under a vacuous condition we get the trans or that is anti diol or a cis diol or syn diol. We discussed the mechanism and we went through this particular type of intermediate. If water is present then this intermediate opens up to form the cis diol or a syn diol or, or if this a nucleophile attacks onto this intermediate under non aqueous condition then of course we get the anti attack to form this trans or anti diol. We also looked at Fetzon's oxidation using silver carbonate silite for selective secondary and allylic oxidations of this kind. Then we proceeded further for ruthenium tetroxide based oxidations which can also be done using catalytic amount of ruthenium trichloride and sodium metaperiodate that lead to the cleavage of this double bond to the corresponding ketone or aldehyde. And of course, if we use this condition here we discussed in detail how the carboxylic acid can be formed. We also saw how ruthenium tetroxide or this particular combination allows an aromatic ring also to be cleaved to the corresponding acid. Then we modified the reagent as reported by Steve Lay to a tetra N propyl ammonium perruthenate like this and because of the negative charge here the ox oxidation reactivity of the this TPAP is somewhat less than that of ruthenium tetroxide and therefore oxidation of primary alcohols to aldehydes is possible without over oxidation to acid or without other oxidations such as that of a double bond. Then we talked about the Tamao Fleming oxidation with lot of mechanistic details. We saw how Tamao oxidation occurs under basic conditions or neutral conditions or acid conditions and of course it is a stereo selective oxidation. In a similar fashion the Fleming based oxidation we saw with the carbon silicon bond uh, having a aromatic part here. Then we did DMDO based oxidations where olefins can be epoxidized with dimethyl dioxirane which can be either isolated or can be reacted in situ and then we also saw how DMDO is utilized. Uh, in the manganese selen based complexes of Katsuki Jacobson type of oxidations. And of course uh, from the fructose derived ketone we can make what is called a she catalyst and that leads to the epoxidation of olefins to chiral epoxides. Then we saw the utility of oxygenidines of this type and starting from an optically active uh, starting material having an auxiliary which is chiral auxiliary we got the corresponding compound in which the hydroxy group here can be stereo selectively introduced. And of course we can also take the chiral oxygeridine and oxidize the ketones which are having a prochiral hydrogens here to the corresponding alpha hydroxy ketones with high enantio selectivity. Then we also looked at oxidations at unfunctionalized carbons that is Barton and related reactions. 
Starting from this nitrite ester, we uh, got the corresponding alkoxy radical here and then eventually we had this abstraction of the hydrogen here and the carbon NO bond formation and then of course such products were converted to many other products. Pseudomonas potida was used as a uh, interesting uh, gram negative bacteria for the conversion of uh, aromatics to diols and this happened to be optically pure. If we have uh, other than hydrogen here like halogen alkyl then we can get this particular cis diol as optically pure compound and then one of them we utilized it for the conversion of this diol which is uh, not optically pure but then we could get to these optically pure glycosidase inhibitors through various transformations. And we also we saw the conversion of other substituted diols into some important intermediates. Then we looked at the reductions in organic chemistry utilizing commonly employed reagents like sodium borohydride, lithium aluminum hydride, dibol H reductions with lithium aluminum hydride, aluminum chloride and of course redal of this kind. And we looked at the merits and demerits of these compounds or reagents for the reaction of uh, various kinds of uh, carbonyl compounds or esters or nitriles or triple bonds or various reductions. During the process we also introduced Weinreb amides for selective reductions or selective reactions. Then we looked at how uh, Lucci reduction which is a combination of sodium borohydride serum chloride allows reduction of enones to allylic alcohols or this type of selective reductions. Then we looked at lithium borohydride, zinc borohydride, superhydride, the selectrides, all these kinds of reducing agents we looked at it. Gradually we increased the steric hindrance and selectivity. And then of course we also saw the selectivity aspect in terms of how lithium borohydride and how zinc borohydride are different from sodium borohydride or lithium aluminum hydride. Then we saw sodium cyanoborohydride how it can allow the reduction of aldehydes or ketones under acidic conditions because sodium cyanoborohydride is stable under acidic conditions. And then we saw dissolving metal reductions using these kind of monovalent metals or bivalent metals. And finally we saw McMurray olefination where we use titanium based reagents. We saw of course in these cases whether reduction occurs or CC bond formation occurs when we take monovalent or bivalent metals. And then in the case of McMurray of course coupling also occurs of this kind. Then we looked at reducing agents such as silanes of different kinds like trialkyl silanes which reduce an alcohol for example to the corresponding hydrocarbon here under acidic conditions because they protonate generate a carbocation and then reduction leads to the hydrocarbon here. In that context we also saw the utility of this polymethyl hydrosiloxane and in that context radical reaction CC bond formation and deoxygenation of this kind which is also known as button deoxygenation and of course many CC bond formations were used seen using tributyl tin hydride as well as this tris trimethyl silyl silane or tetraphenyl disilane. We looked at various kinds of uh, reactions. Then we went to asymmetric synthesis of this kind where initially we discussed Sharpest epoxidation where the allylic alcohols can be converted into epoxy alcohols with different uh, kinds of uh, enangioselective products. And also util, you saw, we saw the utility of these epoxides that is uh, epoxide opening in a very regioselective and stereoselective fashion including PN rearrangement. So under a neutral condition and under basic conditions we saw different reactions. Then we looked at Katsuki-Jacobson epoxidation 
using uh, this kind of saline complexes. This involves basically epoxidation of unfunctional isolefins to the corresponding epoxides. And of course, we saw how the mechanistic aspects of Jacobson and Katsuki type of uh, proposals were implemented in these oxidations. Then we looked at asymmetric diode oxidation that is Sharpless based diode oscillation where double bond were converted to the corresponding diols, the syn diols. <coughs> and during that process, we saw how this kind of alkaloids were utilized. And the AD mix alpha and AD mix beta, how can they be in a predictable fashion utilized in organic synthesis? We also looked at the Monsanto synthesis of L-DOPA using asymmetric catalytic hydrogenation. What is something very important was basically initially developed by William Knowles to form L-DOPA which is a very important uh, compound on an industrial scale. Of course, he used this kind of uh, rhodium catalyst and then Noyori modified the ligand to this particular BINAP based ligand, chiral ligands and then made use of various kinds of BINAP ruthenium or BINAP rhodium complexes as chiral catalysts and also allowed these reactions to take place in a highly energy-selective fashion. Then in this asymmetric reduction based uh, studies. We also looked at the utility of the Kori Bakshi Chibata catalyst of this type for the reduction of ketones to alcohols here like this in a highly enantio selective and highly predictable fashion. And we invoked the transition state of this kind where this ligand or this chiral catalyst allows the reducing agent that is BH3 or any diborane or any borane to attach here and then allow highly enantial selective reduction. Then we did the CC bond formations of various kinds starting with uh, how the enolates uh, allow CC bond formation and what are the drawbacks, then how the enamines emerged, then how the use of enol silyl ethers emerged and what are the uh, limitations and the positive aspects of these reactions. Then we proceeded via alkylation through imine chemistry which eventually led to the formation of this or introduction of this ramp and SAMP based auxiliaries and thus this type of imine formation which allowed the CC bond formation to take place in an enantioselective fashion. In the same context then Wolfgang Kohlers, Kempfer Seltums were introduced to allow Diels order and Michael reaction to take place using this type of Kempfer Seltums. Then of course we did the CC bond formation via boron and sil silicon enolates. David Evans introduced oxazolidinones of this kind and then we could do this carbon, carbon bond formation like what I have shown here using different types of uh, bases like this NAHMDS or LDA. And of course, in this context, we also discuss various kinds of boron and silicon enolates. Then we looked at uh, ireland claisen rearrangement where we looked at and discussed the importance of geometry of enolates. First the formation of the enolates itself was very important and how does the presence or absence of HMPA in THF lead to one enolate and over the other enolate. Now in that context we looked at Claisen rearrangement basically and then various modifications, Johnson Claisen rearrangement, Asian Moser Claisen rearrangement, Bellus Claisen rearrangement, J 
chain map rearrangement. Like this various aspects of Claisen rearrangement including other Claisen rearrangement, higher Claisen rearrangement. Then finally we saw Bamford Stevens reactions and Shapiro reactions which uh, also allow CC bond formation to take place which proceed through an intermediate of tosyl hydrozone of this kind which uh, allow the formation of uh, E or Z olefins depending on the solvent and also we saw that how Shapiro modifications of this reaction using two equivalents of butyl lithium and an electrophile allow vinyl anion to form onto the same carbon where tosyl hydrogen was formed and this vinyl anion then leads to the introduction of an electrophile. For example, when we have a DMF as an electrophile we got the corresponding aldehyde. So, we can convert this tosyl hydrazone to this vinyl aldehyde. Then in the domain of uh, allyl additions to uh, carbonyl compounds to allow CC bond formations what we looked at was reactions of allyl stannanes, allyl boranes, allyl boronates and allyl indiums to various kinds of carbonyl compounds. Initially we saw that say in the case of uh, Stannin additions, we saw that if we take either a Z oriented crotyl stannin or E oriented crotyl stannin and add on to an aldehyde under heating conditions then we get syn product from Z oriented crotyl stannin and anti product from E oriented crotyl stannin. In the case of allyl indium chemistry we saw that we can carry out the reaction in situ upon reaction of uh, indium metal with uh, halides say allyl halides for example and it leads to the formation of this particular indium species which then reacts with the aldehydes or ketones in situ and leads to the formation of CC bonds. So, this is how we looked at various kinds of allyl moiety additions to carbonyl compounds. Then we looked at the chemistry of silicon based reactions where allyl and vinyl silanes were used and we very categorically looked at the importance of stabilizing beta carbocations and then application in organic synthesis. We also looked at not exactly CC bond formation but a very important uh, reaction which is called Peterson olefination reaction under basic condition it leads to syn elimination to form this product and under acidic condition or under Lewis acidic condition via anti elimination to be form this particular kind of product. In the end we looked at Simon Smith reaction to form a cyclopropane ring which is a CC bond formation using this type of protocol where you used diiodomethane zinc copper couple in ether and this gives the corresponding cyclopropane where the geometry of the cyclopropane was similar to the geometry of the hydroxy group and we also saw the mechanistic aspects of it. Likewise when we had this homoallyl alcohol also we got the corresponding cyclopropane having the similar type of geometry as the carbon hydroxy bond. Utility of uh, this kind of uh, cyclopropane reactions with Simon Smith type of reaction was also utilized to prepare molecules like this which is uh, a natural product. And then of course we uh, applied this for the synthesis of a pheromone which is called as Grandisol using the cyclopropane based chemistry. So, in short in this course we covered various aspects of essentials of oxidation reduction and CC bond formation and their application in organic synthesis. I am hopeful that it will help you all who are studying 
MSc courses and wish to appear for GATE, NET and GRE examination. So we will stop it here and I wish you all the best for the examination pertaining to this particular course and also in the future other examinations and also for your future as a researcher in chemistry. Thank you and bye.